Hello, it's Confucenti, and today we'll be looking at the Infinix Zero X. I've been using this device as my main device for some time now, so I'd like to share my experience with you, as well as discuss the specs and features of this phone with you, so you too can know if this phone is worth your money or your time. I'll be showing you videos I made of me playing games on this phone, so while you watch, I'll be discussing the necessities with you. So keep watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. This phone comes in a long box, and inside this box, you will find a free black case by Uremo, a 45 watt charger, a Type C cable, and a good sounding earpiece. Yes, it's good sounding because I never expected this quality of earpiece for free. At just 193 gram and 7.3 mm body, I could say this phone is thin and light. I also love the punch hole selfie cam, I prefer it to the notches, and I'm glad that Infinix decided to stick with the punch hole this time. My only complaints with this phone's design would be the plastic frame. It is hard to notice, but if you look close enough, you would. I also do not like the fact that Infinix did not specify the version of the Gorilla Glass used on this phone, considering that this phone is made of glass both on the front and on the back. Also, the fingerprint sensor on this phone has no curves around it to make it easy to locate, so that could be a problem if you're not using the case, which is why I used the case all through the time I had this phone as my main device. Talking about the display, this phone comes with a 6.67 inch 1080 by 2400 resolution. It is a 20 by 9 aspect ratio with a 395 pixel per inch. It's an AMOLED screen with a really fast 120Hz refresh rate. It also has 700 nits peak brightness, which enables you to use this phone even on a sunny day, and I had absolutely no problem. However, if you set this phone to Auto 120Hz, the Auto 120Hz only activates the high refresh rate on system applications and on the home screen. Once you go into games or other apps, it goes down to 60Hz. I don't know why this is the case because I would expect that the 120Hz to be activated on games rather than on things which do not really benefit from it aside from having smooth scrolling and animation. Under the hood, you have this phone running on Android 11 with the XOX 7.6 scan. It also has its own voice assistant called Fullax. I don't use voice assistant so much, but I did use Fullax. The OX is smooth, apps run fine, the XOX scan isn't too heavy in my opinion. Though, this phone comes with some bloatware, which thankfully you can uninstall most of them. The network speed display is not accurate. I want to believe it is in megabit, but if it is in megabytes, then this phone is outrightly lying to you. It could be a problem with Android 11 because I've seen another phone which runs on Android 11 as a bit the same issue where the network speed tells me a much higher speed than I can actually get or that I am actually getting at that point. Another issue I had with this OX or with this skin, I don't know, whichever causes this problem, is that I couldn't install Asphalt 9. I tried so hard to install Asphalt 9, but no avail. A friend of mine also had the same experience with this. He couldn't install Asphalt 9, so I hope this is fixed in the software update.
Talking about performance, the Helio G95, which this phone comes with, makes the performance really good. I had good performance on every game tested, PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile, PS29, even Genshin Impact, which I played on highest, though I would advise you to reduce the quality for better frames. Also, the 120Hz display makes gaming on this phone enjoyable, even though you have to manually set the phone to 120Hz rather than auto like I mentioned before. However, I would have preferred the Snapdragon chipset or a more recent and powerful MPK chipset for much better performance. But well, since I had good performance, I wouldn't complain too much about it. If you want to game on speakers, then you're in luck because this phone comes with a very loud and clear speaker. But for me, I usually game with my earpiece, so that is what I used most of the time when I game. The haptic feedback is good enough, so yeah, you can feel the vibrations, you can feel the bomb blast and you can enjoy your gaming. But I do not like the fact that this phone, for its price, comes with a mono speaker. A stereo speaker would have been expected and would have been more appreciated on a device this expensive, don't you think? For connectivity, I would say you don't have any problems because while I used this phone, I didn't have any problems connecting to a Wi-Fi network or using the 4G LTE mobile data. Even Bluetooth works without any problems. You could connect to Bluetooth headset, to your earpods, all in a second. You don't have to manually go to Bluetooth and select them once you've paired them the first time. So yeah, team connectivity is top notch. I am not one to take too much photos, but if you're a photo lover, then this phone may satisfy your needs because at the back of this phone, you'll find a bump which houses a 108 megapixel wide angle camera, an 8MP telephoto, an 8MP 120 degree ultra wide. I tested out these cameras and the results were not too bad. On the front, you find a 16MP selfie cam, which, like I said, it's a punch hole design, which I actually love. Infinix advertises this phone as being capable of taking photos of the moon with its 8MP periscope camera. I did test out this feature, yeah, but the results were not too impressive like you would see in the photos. Also, the selfies are just average and the autofocus is not consistent. I did love the daytime photos though and the zoom. I could zoom very far without losing much quality, so thumbs up to Infinix for that. Now let's talk about the big guy, I mean the battery performance on this phone. For a 4500mAh battery, this phone does not perform badly. 
it does carry me through the whole day but on light usage or maybe medium usage for heavy usage this phone can take you through the day you'd have to charge it talking about charging this phone charges really fast so you wouldn't even notice that the battery is not up to standard or didn't carry you through the whole day this phone could charge as infinite advertises 40 percent in 15 minutes however i did notice from my testing that it charges 30 percent in 15 minutes which in my opinion is not too bad that means that in about an hour, you would be able to get this phone fully charged from 0% to 100%. That's a good deal for me. And it doesn't matter how long the battery lasts in this case because you could easily charge it up and get back to whatever you were doing. Be it gaming, streaming, just whatever you were doing. Alright, with all that said, I'm very certain that the next question on your mind would be whether you should get this phone or not. This phone should be selling around $360. And for that price, we are looking at over 160,000 Naira in my country with the current exchange rate. That is on the high side for any mobile device. And for that cost, you can get some other devices which will have premium specs. But how many of those devices will have an AMOLED screen plus good performance which I enjoyed on this device? So I think it's up to you to you know weigh your options and know if you want good performance and if you want Infinix, if you want the Zero X, you'd have to pay this price. And for this price of paying, you're getting an 8GB of RAM, 128GB storage and you're also getting the fast refresh rate which this phone comes with. I did enjoy playing games on this fast refresh rate like I said before, it is awesome. It makes gaming smooth and I feel maybe it made me a better gamer, I don't know, don't hold me to that. But yeah, I did play better with this phone than I did on other phones. Also, the charging is fast, I enjoyed the fact that I could charge up my phone really fast with the 45W charging support. The camera is good, it takes good photos, even though I didn't really enjoy the moon shots which Infinix took much time to advertise. Oh uh, yeah, it captures the moon, but the moon sometimes looks like an egg, but well, who takes pictures of the moon anyways? Do you? Oh, you do. Alright. To sum it up, I would say that if you love Infinix and its devices, and you love the premium features which this phone is bundled with, you would be able to pay this price and enjoy this phone. But if you do not want the premiumness of this phone and would be ready to let go of some premium features for, you know, less spending, then you can go for cheaper devices which of course may not come with AMOLED screens or the 120Hz refresh rate or the 45W fast charging. These are the things that make this phone so good. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you've been able to make a much better decision of whether you should get this phone or not. If you're not subscribed, I think this is the time to do so because I'll be uploading much videos like this. So if you're interested in phone reviews, device reviews, tech gadgets, then this is the channel to subscribe to. So hit that subscribe button and get ready for more videos from me. Have fun and see you in the next one. Bye.